Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the H1 FY24 earnings conference call of Baselic Fly Studio Limited, hosted by Kiran Advisors. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Chandni Chande from Kiran Advisors. Thank you, and over to Ms. Chande. Thank you. On behalf of Kiran Advisors, I welcome you all to the conference call of Basilic Fly Studio Limited. From management side, we have Mr. Bala Krishnan, Managing Director and CEO, Mrs. Yoga Lakshmi, Whole Time Director and COO. Mr. Prabhakar, Director and Head of Studio, Mr. Sudarshan, Senior Vice President, Finance and Accounts, Mr. Nikhil Mida, Company Secretary. Now I hand over the call to Mr. Nikhil Mida. Over to you, sir. Welcome all. Michael Nikhil Mida, Company Secretary and Compliance Officer at Basilic Fly Studio Limited. Along with me, as stated by Chandani, we have Mr. Bala Krishnan, Mrs. Yoga Lakshmi, Mr. Prabhakar. And Mr. Sudarshan, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to our inaugural conference call to discuss Specialist Fly Studio Limited financial performance for the first half of the fiscal year 2024. It is an honor to address you all, especially considering our recent listing on the NSC Emerge platform. Before we delve into the details of H1 FY24, I would like to provide a brief overview of our company and its business model. Bethelic Fly Studio (BFS) was founded in 2016 and is a leading visual effects studio headquartered in Chennai with a branch office in Pune, India, with subsidiaries located at Canada and UK. We specialize in creating captivating visual experiences that push the boundaries of creativity and technology. Our exceptional VFX solutions cater to a wide range of mediums, including movies. TV shows, web series, and commercials, ensuring that every detail is meticulously crafted. Our journey has been remarkable beginning with a modest 800 square feet workspace and a handful of employees. Today, we are a hub of VFX talent from India and around the world, with more than 10,000 completed projects and collaborations with more than 300 clients, including 900 movies, 2,000 series, 8,000 commercials. We have cemented our position as a top-tier VFX studio. Our dedicated team of 500 plus members operates from offices in India, at Chennai and Pune, and London and Vancouver. VFX achieved record-breaking IPO performance in September 2023, leading to its listing on NSC Emerge platform. In the preceding fiscal year, FY23, VFX reported total revenues of 79 crores, with EBITDA of INR 39 crores and net profit of INR 28 crores. Now let's shift our focus to the operational highlights of H1 financial year 2024. The first half of 2024 has been nothing short of remarkable and eventful. Notably, we secured the listing on Emerge platform of NSC, which marked a significant milestone for us. During this period. We secured a substantial amount of new business and expanded our workforce to meet the surging demand from our esteemed customers. While the entire industry faced challenges during quarter two of financial year 24 due to some writers' strike in the U.S., we managed to grow despite adversities. Our Canadian subsidiary demonstrated resilience by achieving break-even numbers. The resolution of the strike paved way for a surge in the new work orders. In anticipation of this increased demand, and in line with our commitment to delivering the highest quality of work, we expanded our team and opened key and appointed key senior positions in crucial domains such as VFX supervision and production, compositing, and pipeline management. One notable addition to our senior leadership team is the renowned VFX supervisor and producer Dan Levinson, who brings a wealth of expertise to VFX. His decades of production experience, spanning to over 85 feature films, 100 plus series episodes, 
and numerous national commercial spots have endowed him with a wealth of knowledge and problem solving skills his appointment with bfs will fortify our presence in the american market and open doors for exciting collaboration our compositing supervisor is another significant addition to our team with over 15 years of valuable experience their exceptional talent has been recognized with a prestigious nomination for the 2023 global stage ves award for their work on the lord of rings the rings of power their dedication and skill are a testament to the high caliber of talent within our team now let us delve into the financial highlights of h1 financial year 2024 stand alone h1 fy24 highlights reveal a total income of 49.89 crores a beta of 24.07 crores boasting a strong beta margin of 48% and a net profit of 18.93 crores with a robust net profit margin of 38%. Consolidated H1 FY24 highlights indicate a total income of 51.93 crores, a beta of 24.05 crores and a strong beta margin of 46% and a net profit of INR 18.88 crores, exhibiting a formidable net profit margin of 36%. We did experience a slight decrease in profitability due to the strike, but our Canadian subsidiary managed to be at the break even. I would like to draw your attention to the significant growth we achieved in H1 FY24 compared to the full fiscal year financial year 23. Our revenue was approximately 63% of FY23. EBITDA was approximately 62% and net profit was approximately 68%. A strong performance during H1 FY24 combined with the infusion of funds from our IPO position us well for the future growth. motivated by our promising growth prospects we are gearing up for a transformative journey our ambitions plans include establishing two new dedicated facilities in india and expanding our international market with a focus on europe and australia in addition to these strategic initiatives bfs is actively exploring new opportunities such as venturing into kids entertainment and fostering new collaborations in this regard empowered by our exceptional performance in h1 favorable industry conditions the proceeds from our ipo our dedicated team and the robust project pipeline we retain an optimistic outlook not only for h2 fy24 but for the years to come ahead now i would like to open the floor for the q and a session we are delighted to address any questions you may have thank you for your patience and for accompanying us on our journey Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Pranay Jain from Deal Wealth Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, congratulations uh, to the management team uh, and entire crew of the company on a successful listing and also a robust uh, first half to the year. Uh, I have a few questions, uh, so I'll start with three. uh first uh, wanted to understand uh, with over 50 crores of revenue that we've clocked in the first half of this year uh could you give us a sense of the visual uh, storytelling palette that we have uh, uh, executed in the form of movies uh, tv shows web series and commercials some numbers on, on these fronts just to uh, get more uh, color Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Pranay. I this is Balakrishnan, uh, Managing Director of Skill Tech Studio Limited. Uh, to answer your question, uh, you said about uh, the number of films, the uh, number of the the ratio in which uh, we would we are working on the films and television. Uh, I think uh, the ratio would be a quite uh, 
I am actually interested in the big picture because in seven years, if uh, you are almost um, on path to achieve hundred crores in a financial year, which is quite commendable, uh, how are the next two or three years going to look like? Uh, this is geographically also segment wise. You mentioned that uh, kids entertainment will be a focus area. So, what is it that we are looking at uh, increasing our presence in animation, gaming, uh, out of home media? So, want you to get. Uh, Uh, visibility on these two things. Uh, looking into the future, uh, we do have uh, bigger aspirations in terms of building a global uh, integrated entity that is not only within India but also sizable teams in uh, London as well as uh, uh, in LA. Uh, we have a VFX operator now who have worked closely with production networks. He comes from that expertise where uh, he has worked closely with the decision makers in the industry and have uh, uh, played a key role in terms of uh, creative aspects of uh, building those uh, movies. And television series as well with networks like Paramount, Walt Disney, and Warner Brothers. So that pretty much uh, uh, plays a that would really help us in terms of building our uh, vision, uh, in terms of building a team as well. Uh, not only looking at uh, working on some aspects of uh, mini project, but getting ourselves involved in right from pre-production to final delivery, right from preparing concept, working closely with filmmakers and production houses, um, helping them uh, their. To realize their vision to come into uh, final uh, delivery. So those these are the aspects that we've been working on. And as in we speak, we are also working towards getting into children shows as well. That is something that uh, has a very good market in terms of animation as well as visual effects. Uh, where uh, that will have more, that will bring in more stability and long term projects as well, uh, which will uh, help us uh, to work on projects. Uh, maybe it can go up to 40, 45 episodes. Uh, we have that kind of executives who have that. Uh, Uh, closer uh, connection and networks to these uh, decision makers in the industry, and likewise, uh, we also have a very good creative team as well. Uh, we have worked on movies like Star Wars uh, and other award-winning movies and television series, uh, not only in India but also in uh, uh, London as well as in uh, LA. So that would uh, really take us to places, and uh, we are also in talks with uh, some of the companies in close collab, working on some close collaborations. And if that really works out, uh, we would have a great role to play in terms of uh, in terms of working on movies uh, and projects, uh, sorry, uh, television projects that would come into slate for the next year. Great. Uh, yeah, so as part of what you just said, uh, I will get back in the queue. But uh, uh, regards to international, I just want to understand if we now have a team strength of uh, around 500. In two years, how much is that uh, going to be scaled up to? And uh, I, I believe major part of that will be domestic. But what could be the mix looking like across international markets versus India in terms of team strength? Uh, we are looking to uh, double, uh, maybe eight uh, hundred to thousand uh, strength in the next one year time, and like this in India. And uh, like this, it's not only about the numbers. We are also planning. To, we are also working on training at the moment, uh, where uh, the upskilling our artists, where uh, Uh, even uh, maybe uh, for example, if 15 artists and we have 15 artists and uh, they can work up to the capability of uh, 35, 40 artists based upon the skill set. It's not only one uh, skill set, but multiple skill set is what uh, we've been working on at the moment uh, with Unreal and FX training uh, being provided to the artists at the moment. So this way uh, we are uh, trying to build and uh, making sure that we are ready to pick up more work and accommodate. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, we are also working on software uh, development and uh, developing a lot of tools which can uh, reduce the number of man days required to do a particular task. So that automation is also happening. Whenever we have similar shots, we can automate and we can reduce the man days needed so that we can deliver the projects quickly and take up more projects and more creative work. So that is also simultaneously uh, uh, we are concentrating on that also. And uh, we are only one among uh, very few, not very few. One, uh, maybe it's based out of India. We have one company where uh, we have a director of digital transformation role, and uh, that is uh, being handled by uh, Jamie Brains, who is based out of London, and uh, he has in his past experience. Uh, he has led pipeline teams in uh, uh, DNEG, and DNEG is the industry uh, global industry leader, and they have won seven Oscars. And he comes from that background, and he leads the team, and uh, we are building a team under him. And we have recently come for a summit as well. Now, uh, to explain the plans that we have in place uh, for uh, building tools and also in terms of how we will adapt uh, AI strategies and uh, at automation stuff. So this would really help. So we are also looking at ways where uh, we can uh, 
apart from numbers how we can increase our productivity and um, and making the best use of uh, resources available to us uh, thank you uh, you mentioned 800 to 1000 that is overall team or you are saying domestic team in the next one both overall team and we are mainly concentrating on international market domestic is a plan uh, which could happen but uh, as of now we are very much into the international markets and uh, teaming so in, in india domestic Yeah, domestic in the side. You mean uh, within India? Within India, how many uh, artists in that way, or taking up the project wise? You're asking about the domestic. No, I understand your uh, project focus is international, but I'm asking if 800 to 1000 is the team you are aiming. How much of that is going to be international versus? Domestic? International would be very less uh, comparatively. We are planning to have only boutique uh, presence. internationally we are planning to build uh, sizable teams in london and likewise uh, as per uh, as in uh, over a period of time we will grow the teams out there proportionally in terms of mainly in india and uh, proportionally we will grow a team in london as well as in uh, london yeah okay so just one small suggestion now with regards to the name of the projects that were mentioned by you in the earlier answer if you could uh, share that in in the forthcoming presentation uh show commercials whatever it is that you would like to highlight that would uh, add some picture and and color to to the lines of work that you do and we give uh some more perspective to investors sure. yeah we will definitely look into that and like this uh, we also received a we recently released uh, dumb money from sony pictures uh we have our credits as well uh, the team credits that we listed in the movie that was quite recently released Uh, which movie? Sorry, dumb money, dumb money from by Sony Pictures. Okay, okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kushi Chand from Chris PMS. Please go ahead. Uh, hi team, congratulations for the good set of numbers. I had two questions. Uh, first of all, I wanted to ask, uh, what is the payment procedure when it comes to our project? Is it on a milestone basis, or how does it work? Because I've uh, noticed that the receivables have shot up a little. Ah, uh, thank I, you. Yeah, Nikhil, please. Yeah, please. Hi, this is Nikhil. uh kushi thanks uh, for the appreciation to keep you updated on the facts it's like we work on milestone basis and the payment cycle in this industry works around like on an average of 30 to 90 days there are customers vendors who are paying us within 40 45 days also and there are ones who are paying us within those 90 days also and as you mentioned that uh, there's a hike in the uh, debtors side so it's nothing like that uh, you know the money is getting delayed or something it's like these are new customers whom we are building relationships with and because the industry works on a tenure of up to 90 days we want them to have enjoy that liberty of up to 90 days so that is the reason it's looking on a little higher side and uh, when compared to the percentage it's less than 10 percentage of the total which is more than 6 months out uh, outstanding and we have around like 61 debtors and out of that only just four holding less than 10% are more than six month debtors okay or right. that helps a lot thank you and my second question is around ai sorry i had a lot of questions around it but uh, have you all incorporated uh, ai in any of our processes because uh, i think a lot of softwares are now able to reduce the rotoscopy work uh yes uh, regarding ai stuff uh, we are using uh, copycat tools uh, which would uh, really help us in terms of reduce the roto work and in terms of uh, as in we have this reduction in roto work we are also involving our uh, uh, roto artists into other streams as well so that really helps us once the roto work gets reduced uh, we will be able to uh, we are currently using them into compositing stuff so we are converting all our uh, roto artists over into road compositors and also into fx training And uh, this uh, roto work is reduced using a copycat tool. So we've been using, and we are also trying to work on that to customize more. Okay, sir. Thank you. Wish the team a happy Diwali. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anika Mittal from Invest Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. 
Can I have it? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry to interrupt. Ma'am, your voice is muffled. If you could use your head for a uh, handset, that would be great. Um, now is it audible? Yes, ma'am. Please continue. Oh. So, um, you have mentioned we have done 900 plus projects and 2,000 plus that series over the last 10 years. So, yes, ma'am. My question is... Um, why the substantial numbers came in financial year 23 only, which is the no, year before IPO? And why are we at only 90th year level despite the huge numbers of projects you have mentioned? And then uh, if you look into the number of projects, uh, maybe like uh, we will have a, uh, uh, maybe we'll have some projects where we will have a substantial role to play with. And apart from that, there would be some floating projects. Since based upon the capacity that we have, uh, we will have two types of projects. One is to have the stability and uh, and we will always try to keep relationship with multiple clients at the same time. We wouldn't uh, uh, be in a position to uh, move away from one particular client based upon the, we don't have any availability. So that we, we try to work on some part on some project and uh, we always have uh, some projects where we work on the substantial part. So like we... Uh, uh, this is that is the reason uh, why we do have multiple projects, and at the same time, the, this is the base, that is how it's reflected on the revenue as well. And uh, based upon your other question about uh, why the numbers are more in 23, it is more a reflection of how uh, the streaming platform and the demand that we received from streaming platform increased over the years. And even if you look into uh, the previous years as well, uh, before COVID, uh, we could able to see the surge in the revenue. And just after COVID, we couldn't be able to make use of uh, that into uh, expanding our team based upon the restrictions that we had during uh, just, just post-COVID. And if you look into the numbers further down, that's when uh, where we can we could be able to really utilize and uh, expand our team in Pune as well as in Vancouver. And these are the main reasons. Particularly if you look into Vancouver, we had uh, some closer uh, creative teams working in uh, Vancouver location as well. That really helped us to bring in more production-based projects. So that is the reason now uh, we could see the these are all the combination of multiple factors that really helped us to you know, build our business over the years. And uh, we really see a lot more uh, store for us in the future as well, based upon the demand that we see continuously with the streaming platforms and uh, various other uh, long-form, short-form and uh, other uh, formats coming in, in terms of uh, the way that uh, things can be narrated with the storytelling and other formats. Okay. Uh, so my second question is, uh, you mentioned in one of the interviews that we get advances from the customers in case of production houses and in case of VFX studios as well. We get our money realized within time. So two questions on this side. One, uh, if payment cycle is too good, then why our CFO to EBITDA ratio is too low at 11% only? And second, in September uh, result quarter uh, also, I agree you reported 19 CR of that. But just look at the cash flows. They are they have turned negative. So help me to understand if you if we are that good in trade negotiations with our clients, why the same is getting is not getting reflected in our numbers? Okay, the finance related question. I will uh, try to see a few times. Sure. I think I I will take this ahead. Yes, ma'am. As you mentioned about the advances, so uh, just to clarify, we have clarified that earlier as well. These advances are not something that we long for. These advances are which the uh, production houses and studios give to us to pre-book us so that we make ourselves available as and when their projects are coming up. It's kind of like they don't want to lose an opportunity of working with us because they know the perfection and the timelines that we can meet, uh, meet out for them, not everybody in the industry could help them meet out the same. That is the reason they come up giving such advances to us to pre-book us. And as the passage of time is moving, we are even getting rigid on that front. Not everybody, we are catching those advances. We are working on that model only with very, very reputed studios so that the relation sustains and continues with them. And as you mentioned about the cash flows, so cash flows, okay, as you mentioned that they are not reflecting the same value as it should be. So as the industry was into a surge, you, you understand that there was an international issue going on in U.S. and most of our counterparts have seen a decline in number. And we with our Canadian subsidiary, which happens to be our North American arm of the business, have sustained the market with break-evens. 
So that is not uh, really a negative cash flow. It's a cash flow having impact of the issues going on in US in the name of the strike. And we were sustaining and supporting our Canadian subsidiary as and when required. That may probably be one of the reasons that you are coming up with that kind of a question. Okay. Uh, so, uh, one more question to myself. Uh, what is our growth guidance for financial 24 on um, top line, staff margins, and cash flows as well? And you are talking about uh, the first half here? Uh, so full complete, complete financial year 24. Um, that is something <laughs> I cannot comment on at the moment, but yes, it would be better than what we have delivered in H1 because yes, with H2, we have a lot of more opportunities to fulfill. Yes, uh, sir, I have listened an interview, uh, I think, at the time of high flow. The uh -huh. management has guided for 60 to 70 percent growth in top line with uh, 30 percent tax margin. So, Yes, we are. Yes, we are very hopeful and working towards that. But I don't think on this kind of a forum we could uh, make any commitments to that. But yes, we are actually working on the same uh, uh, benchmarks what we have uh, already stated on a public forum earlier. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Darshit Vora from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, congrats on the super results. I just have uh, two questions. So, mm -hmm. first one is, uh, you said that you're planning for two new facilities in India. So, uh, what do you think, uh, like how much would that cost and are there any plans of taking any debt or will it be all from internal accruals? So to answer that, uh, it is like the two facilities that we have mentioned, they were a part of our objects to the issue and very well uh, detailedly mentioned in the prospector. So that is where we are going to apply our IPO proceed. So at the moment, we don't see any requirements for the debt coming in. Okay, so no debt? At the moment, no, sir. Okay, and... Uh, just just some kind of overview on uh, revenue and uh, margin for the next two to three years, if you have any. Uh, you know, uh, do you see the uh, strike in America settling down any soon? Uh, even if you look into this first of all, the uh, time period as well, uh, uh, was a, uh, we really made sure that uh, the revenue that we generated, even in spite of uh, strike and other uh, challenges, uh, uh, we kind of... Uh, came over these numbers and based upon the project that we had and uh, we made sure that uh, we utilized the every other opportunity that was available to us not only in American market but also European and uh, other markets as well. So that is the kind of uh, clientele that we have and uh, uh, even in spite of this uh, right of strike and other things, uh, we are very much on track and uh, we've been uh, doing a good job in terms of acquiring project. And uh, when you look into the next year and next year, strike, strike, strike is... Uh, Right to strike over. over and after strike should be over any time soon. They are, they are very much close to the resolution and uh, uh, it should be over by this week. This potentially, week. potentially we see projects getting up. Uh, no, there should be a lot of projects which should be ramped up. That is from January or also from December end. That is post the new year. Uh, we should see a lot of projects ramping up. And uh, we will have a greater opportunity since uh, there, there are a lot of projects on hold and which would come up and... Uh, there will be a lot more requirements open up, open up in the North American as well as the UK market as well. So that will create a lot more opportunities for us. And uh, if you look into the next year, uh, next uh, next uh, quarter, uh, that is the next quarterly and uh, the further next year, uh, we do a lot more opportunities. Even now with uh, executives that we have in place, uh, we are speaking up with some bigger projects that would come up uh, start by March and uh, apart from the regular projects that we have. We will have some bigger projects to start by March, April, May. So, where we will involve ourselves right from pre production to production, so that we'll have further good margins, which will be worked out uh, globally with artists in London as well as in India. So, where we can see some good margins as well on these projects. These are bigger names and bigger production houses. So, we are very hopeful on occurring uh, and we are already working on some of the pre, uh, pre production parts on these movies. Okay. Okay. So, uh, like the uh, operating margins will stay above forty-five percent, in your opinion? 
going forward? I uh, will just keep this, yeah. We will be able to keep that at the same level, sir. Okay, okay, great. Uh, okay, uh, thank you and uh, all the best. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahil Dasani from Mithil Analytics. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, sir. I, I had a few questions. My first question is what proportion of the business or projects should we get from the roto pain segment? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, if you look into roto paint, uh, we are uh, more of a full service VFX company. Uh, we do good uh, amount of roto paint, and apart from that, uh, uh, if you look into percentage wise, when we look, when we take a full service project, there will be some amount of roto and paint involved in it. Our uh, comp work and CG work, and if you look into the overall prospect, uh, the roto and paint would be uh, some part of it, and our creative team would work right from. Uh, Roto starting from 2D to final end of 3D lighting effect and everything, every other aspect. So, can I understand from this that we don't get standalone Roto projects? It's usually a complementary to other services. Yeah, yeah, yes. It's just a complementary to other services. We don't only have Roto and paint projects. We have full service VFX projects. That's why yeah, we, when we build, uh, we have a creative team here and also in a team in London, a VFX supervisor based out of LA. It's all about uh, working right from pre-production to final delivery. So that is where we are very much involved in, in the terms of projects that we work with. Okay, that is helpful. Secondly, what is the proportion of Roto Paint employees in the total employer base and right now, and what would it be after expansion? Uh, maybe if you look into the Roto Paint artists, right? Uh, if uh, for example, uh, some of the company hierarchy would be very different. For example, even if they do compositing and other stuff, uh, since they start as a roto paint artist, we would keep the designation as same as in uh, the level 1, L1, L2, L3. That is how it, it changes up. And uh, for that matter, uh, we have a category of uh, generalists, what we name them as generalists, 2D generalists, uh, who do compositing and also do roto paint as well. Uh, if you look into the numbers, it would be predominantly, we will have a 2D, lot of 2D generalists. That is, uh, yeah, 75 to 80 percentage of uh, generalists who do 2D and the remaining all CG generalists, 3D generalists. So that is how we have the proportion between teams. And uh, but if uh, our designation wise, uh, we have a separate standard where we will keep them as rotopane because that is how international companies do follow uh, in terms of uh, designation. Uh, we really have very stringent. Uh, uh, we are very stringent in terms of how we elevate in terms of process because we keep very high standards for them to move up the value chain. Okay. And secondly, you, you mentioned a copycat uh, tool. Yeah. So how do you, uh, could you speak more about it? How would it replace your auto artist and how fast is it growing? Uh, this is very much in a testing stage as well as like copycat where we can, uh, copycat is something that, uh, Whenever uh, we have, uh, you know, work on some shot, we can uh, use that when, uh, when there is a same level, when we have a sequence which has a similar kind of shots, where we can use this copycat uh, to make sure that it is, uh, you know, uh, it understands uh, the shape of that one shot and can replicate to other at some level. So from there, where we can uh, use that to complete that uh, scope. So it keeps understanding based upon the data that we have. And based on the work that we do, so it it evolves over time and it gets better with time, and the results are also quite better. I think we use more as we we use that tool more. Okay. Uh, lastly, there was a mention of you working in Leo. You had a project, so can you speak more about it in terms of your significance in the short? Uh, we did a lot of. Uh, uh, maybe the fire shots, uh, we did a lot of uh, fire work, fires and uh, the explosion, the fire and a few other stuffs as well. Uh, how was the beauty uh, look of uh, the de-aging of the hero character and uh, and few other stuffs as well. We worked on over 35-37 minutes uh, work on that movie. Around yeah, it was during the last uh, moment that we got into the project and it was a demand, like it was a request from the... Yeah. And even uh, we received a screen credit on uh, the movie as well, on screen credit and uh, beginning, uh, the beginning sequence. It's not for the end credit, but also the beginning title also we received credits. So that is the kind of role we played in the movie. When you look into that beginning credit, uh, uh, 
FPC is the first company and we are the second company, I think third company. Second company is Unify. Yeah. So what I'm trying to understand is... Yes. Okay, I take yes. one. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. So you were saying something? So even though we got into the la very last stage of the project, uh, we got that kind of a uh, welcome from the production house to work for to have us work on that project. Okay. So what I'm trying to understand is because if I'm not wrong, one of your peers, a listed peer, has also got a uh, part of this project. So can I? What was the reason to get this at the last moment? See, we're not actually into the domestic market at all. Place. And uh, we had this request also come from production, so we just thought we will take this time. Uh, this time we will work, try to work on this one to see how the domestic market. Uh, we also have a good reputation since based upon our global reputation, is uh, much uh, the gates are quite open for us to come into the local market. The, com the production network would uh, like us like the com because even if you have seen MPC, the global company, they would have come into this uh, domestic uh, movie this time around. So likewise, we thought. We will also try to see uh, during the last stage. That is the uh, initially it was the, the post production of this movie was uh, being there for I think for one year. Before. We just thought in the last three four months we thought we will give a try. So that is the reason because we are very busy with the other Hollywood movies before that. Okay, uh, and lastly, the shots that you did were these new shots or were these uh, more of a refining shots of the other uh, VFX? Company? No, no. It's a, it's, a, it's a whole shot that we did from our side. We didn't collaborate with any other VFX company on that. We did a finishing shot from our side. Okay. VFX shot by ourselves. Yeah. That is helpful. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Uh, may we request the participants to limit their questions to two per participant? Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Suwana from Niveshai. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, sir, and congratulations for the set of numbers. Um, I have two questions. Uh, do you anticipate the sublettering trend from Hollywood making its way to India? If so, which major subletting firms are looking to partner with Indian vendors for subletting? Uh, sorry, I couldn't, uh, good afternoon, uh, couldn't understand your question, uh, maybe yeah. it's not audible, yeah. Mrs. Suwana, your voice is a little muffled. Uh, uh, are you using uh, your phone? Is it better? Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm okay. using uh, Do you anticipate the subjecting trend from Hollywood movies making its way to India? And if so, which media subjecting firms are looking to partner with Indian lenders for subjecting? I am I'm not sure whether I'm understanding your question right, uh, but I will try to uh, see. Uh, maybe I'm just trying to understand uh, if that is something, uh, maybe for Hollywood movie, how we partner with supplementing to another company in India? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. uh, we usually take all in now. Whenever there is a need of, uh, maybe if there is any uh, project which we can uh, send it out to outsource, maybe those are the projects we do also, but the majority of the work that we do all by in our, in our capacity. Yeah, and also we make sure that the uh, uh, subletting company has a proper uh, approval, security approvals before we sublet to anyone. Uh, with which means the subletting company, do we have a strong relation? Uh, this is uh, maybe... Uh, this is Actually, this is we don't use any particular uh, vendor for this uh, stuff. So maybe we use... Uh, uh, Maybe uh, contractors uh, who come in and can work remotely. Yeah, those are very uh, little discreet and also we don't uh, yeah. disclose such information. Okay, okay. Or do companies like Marvel, Wonder, Brother, Netflix, Paramount and, and other operate their own VFX houses? If they do, how much subletting do they engage in and to which company do they sublet their VFX work? Uh, okay, you mean uh, Marvel, the biggest studios like Marvel? Oh, yeah, Marvel pretty much work with the major VFX studios around the globe. I, uh, I mean, it would be quite tough to name them, but it's all uh, very much uh, global, uh, renowned VFX studios. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
even though we are based out of india in an, even in our early stages we have directly worked with marvel television warner brothers television so that is how we have built our relationship and that is what really helped us to take it forward up on a step on step at a value chain where uh, we now have teams in london and uh, executive uh, senior vf executive in sort of la where uh, we would now place ourselves in terms of getting a result right from pre production to post with these major networks based upon the relationship that we have uh, already had working with them mm-hmm. even with apple and paramount plus as well okay. we have also received credits on these movies where we worked with uh, apple and paramount plus recently sony pictures television for the money and can you please quantify the impact of the strike on the company of that writer strike mm-hmm. regarding writer strike uh, we certainly say there is an impact uh, if it, even with writer strike uh, we have really made sure that you uh, know we have uh, worked on projects and the revenue that you would have seen in the offer league uh, is this is instead of writer strike which is not for writer strike uh, i think the this would have been uh, more than it would have been more than doubled that is the kind of revenue would have generated if not for mm-hmm. writer strike now the writer strike is resolved and uh, uh, we see a lot of opportunities because without writer strike when there is uh, with, with writer strike when there was a very st- the industry was very stringent and uh, and that is the time where we have made this uh, we have made use of these kind of opportunities and still generated up uh, work done projects and generated revenue for this offerly and moving forward uh, with the resolution uh, with the writer strike and all uh, we see a lot of opportunities coming in and for particularly for a company like us who have a strong base in india and also creative leadership team in india we would have excellently positioned uh, to acquire these projects and take it up to the next level this is uh, something is really good for us in terms of how we position ourselves as a company moving forward in taking up those projects okay uh, uh, the right do we start it she new orders are coming from the bollywood business Uh, we are going not with ball we are closely working with based uh, upon uh, the uh, we also have a very good relationship with uh, netflix and a few other places as well uh, that is something that uh, we working on uh, closely and uh, we been working on projects as well based upon as i mentioned earlier based upon our global reputation we are getting very good projects here it is up to us based upon uh, how we come kind of uh, allocate between uh, international as well as bollywood and domestic mar- market maybe that is something uh, we as in we move forward uh, we will try to see if there can be a division as well for the different division to work on work for uh, domestic movies uh, but we don't want to deal this between uh, our already uh, reputed international division and uh, so that will move forward and like this like future plan we will have some uh, team to work on uh, the domestic market which we've been doing already thank you uh, and i have to join thank you the next question is from the line of jatin jadhav from sahasrar capital please go ahead hello am i audible yeah, yeah. yes i uh, i had a question in terms of capabilities like uh, uh, i have a very crude understanding of the industry so please help me out here but some studio specialize in the weather skin textures and probably the environment where where do our capabilities lie uh, we have we do our capabilities in uh, real time environments building up uh, concept based uh, complex environment and like with effect that is uh, fire water as well and like with concept as well building concepts pre visualization uh, since we have a big, and also on set we have a very good uh, reputed on set uh, vfx supervisor based out of delhi who have recently worked with uh, directors like michael b as well uh, so we have that kind of uh, expertise in our team and which uh, really is the straight focus right from pre visualization pre production and also environment based projects and also action and other such cases and all those things so will it be safe to say uh, that let's say a comp- uh, production house comes to you you can do, you can handle their entire business from start to end of a particular movie which has vfx yeah very much uh, because you can see the team right we have a team of uh, vfx supervisor who can able to even in uh, la as well as here in india for in the distance uh, in vfx in la we have a vfx supervisor who can write go from on, on set who can closely work with the film director right from uh, the pre production stage designing the concept and uh, 
So we have the expertise right from the beginning to final delivery. All right. Thank you so much, and happy Diwali to you and all your team. Uh, thank you. Happy Diwali. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Shah from CJ House. Please go ahead. Uh, Mr. Shah, I have unmuted your line. Kindly proceed with your question. As the current participant is not answering, we'll move on to the next question, which is from the line of Mohit Maheshwari from Widget Global Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Hey, Hello. Good afternoon. Yeah. I'm out here. Hello. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you? Yes, sir. Uh, congratulations, congratulations on the good set of numbers and on successful listing. Uh, my first question is: uh, uh, At present, uh, what is the total head count and what we expect at the this year end? Uh, based upon the actually uh, first actually uh, recent, uh, we are planning to do. Uh, we are very much on track to do better uh, for the next. Head count. Head count. You're asking about the uh, employee, employee team members. Team members. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, team members. Uh, we've been constantly recruiting, and uh, even for our Hyderabad and Salem facility, we are recruiting. And uh, uh, currently, it is 500 plus artists across locations. Uh, okay. And like we constantly recruiting uh, team members for Chennai, Pune, as well as uh, for Hyderabad and Salem. Even for Hyderabad and Salem, even though we don't have a physical facility yet, we are still looking for it and identified a few of them. Um, but we still have a remote artist started uh, working for us. Okay. okay. Uh, you have mentioned that uh, 8 to 100 employees in next uh, one year in one of your yes. previous yes. So is that at the March end or uh, from here uh, next uh, one year? Uh, it would be uh, more than a year. It would be a year from now. From now? Yeah. Okay, okay. And my next question is, uh, when we can expect the revenue comes from Hyderabad and Salem facilities and what revenue we can expect from these two facilities? Uh, if you look into the revenue, you know, the, the revenue generation, it will not be based upon the GDP uh, that is in India, and in India. It will be all, uh, the world will be distributed between different facilities. It will be like Hyderabad, Salem, separately. But uh, even for now, uh, the Chennai and Pune, uh, we do work together and uh, that is how the revenue is being generated. It's more of a collaborative work. In India, and for the subsidiary, it can be different in a way that based upon the taxes and the the incentives that we get in different locations. That's how it is created. Uh, so, so based upon the sales that we have and the capacity that we would have in Hyderabad and Salem, it would be proportional to what we have. Yeah. Uh, get from. We do, everybody integrates into a project and we all work together, but uh, we internally have, uh, we, internally, we internally have the bifurcation of home. Um, how much work is getting delivered from which location, but then we don't expose it outside. But then we, it, it is it is all equally split between the artists across all locations in India. Okay. okay. So what's the update on object loss? Uh, as you in, uh, any update on object loss? I mean, Hyderabad and Salem. Uh, we were recently in Hyderabad and uh, we attended the VFX summit. Uh, where we have identified a few locations and also discussed with the uh, government representatives as well over there, uh, where they are offering uh, some attractive incentives for an, a player like this. Uh, maybe uh, it can go up to like 60 to 70 percentage of uh, rent incentives oh, on the real estate. Yeah. So these are very attractive uh, for a company like this when we get such kind of incentive from the government uh, representatives and the teams that are working on over there. So uh, we are very much, we would soon be there in Hyderabad and uh, we have identified few locations which should be used. And likewise in Salem as well, uh, Salem also we have a team in place, we have a recruitment going on in Salem. And in the new year, uh, we should have a facility start up in Salem. And likewise, even in Chennai, uh, we have some expansion plans. And uh, okay. we are already in talks uh, and also finally uh, placed based on uh, the current uh, building itself, additional uh, 200, 300, 200 to 250 seater facility here in uh, Chennai, additional. Uh, Okay, 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 correct. And my last question is, uh, what's our current order book and uh, when can, can we expect this to be completed? Any order book we have maintained? Uh, we have some very good projects uh, uh, in the sense uh, where we have uh, working with uh, major production networks. For example, uh, we consistently work with uh, production networks like uh, Netflix and a few others. And also with uh, some commercial houses as well. So we have this project ongoing and also we are... Uh, 
working on some pre-visualized, uh, pre-visualizing part on some of the movies uh, which will start from uh, April and May as well. So there are some very good projects coming in and we have a very uh, good order book in place. Okay, so in terms of amount you can mention? Uh, at the moment, uh, it, it quite varies between project to project and I think we still bid the, the, the numbers can get increased or uh, it can change from where it is now. So it is something that we wouldn't be able to tell now, but uh, we will uh, announce and uh, release as if we have a Okay, okay, right, right. My last question is, as an investor, how could we come to know the revenue visibility? Uh, how, uh, what revenue guidance you can give for next six months and for next two, two, three, two to three years? Okay, the, con- the confidence that we can provide you is based upon the previous numbers that we have generated as well, the current year as well as the current offer year as well as the previous year. And even the year before as well, we have, we have the VFH industry company based out of India. Uh, we have made sure we are um, quite on top on those things where uh, how we expanded uh, not only within India, in Chennai as well as in Pune. And also we are one of the facility where uh, we quickly moved on to Vancouver as well to have a creative leadership team in Vancouver and building a team in Chennai. So it's all looking better and uh, we are really very much geared up to uh, make it really bigger and better for the next stop only as well as and uh, moving forward the next year post the fight gets over. Things would be much, much better for us. Okay. And bigger. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of... The next question is from the line of Nihar Shah from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, your audio is not clear, Mr. Shah. Yeah. Hello, am I audible now? Uh, sir, your voice is breaking still. Okay. Right. Uh, Mr. Shah, I would request you to kindly rejoin the queue as your audio is not clear, sir. No, no problem. Thank you. Yeah. We'll take the next question from the line of Akshuda Deo from Vivo Commercial Limited. Please go ahead. Hello? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Please proceed. Yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Most of my questions have been answered by other participants, but what I wanted to know was, what's the average age of an ongoing project that you have currently? Not revenue-wise or milestone-wise, like how long do you typically work on a project, the average age for the same? Uh, to, put, to put an average, uh, average may range up to uh, four to six months. Okay, so that would include TV shows, movies, as well as commercial advertisements? I, this is primarily a movie and television. If you look into commercials, commercials average would, uh, maybe we'll have more commercials, but the commercials average are pretty much up to, uh, sometimes uh, it can be only one week and three days to one week from commercials. That's the kind of timeline that we have for commercials. If you bring in commercials into average, uh, we'll have a very different picture. So I thought for movies and television, uh, it's something that we work substantially. And that's where uh, more of uh, four months to six months is an average roughly we work on these projects. Some projects may go up to more than a year, and some of them can be less than just to, less than two months. On an average, it will be up to four to six months on these projects substantially. But if you look at the commercials, this is the picture, like four days to one week time. Yeah, maximum 15 days work that we do from commercials. Okay. And your current revenue breakup from movies as well as TV shows, would that be, that would be how much percentage? Uh, movies and television, uh, it would be pretty much uh, the same, like 35, 30 percent. Uh, maybe uh, movies, it could be a 35 percent. I'm sorry, sir, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, 35 to 80 percent both put together in terms of revenue. Okay, and is your future order book so far what you have lined up reflect the same? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Yash Bajaj from Lucky Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for the opportunity and good afternoon, team. I'm fairly new to this company. 
so just wanted to understand what is the bidding process like when we uh, uh, back these uh, uh, projects and how many such players are uh, uh, bidding uh, uh, who are our competitors uh, if you feel looking to uh, for example at the moment uh, we are competing with uh, smaller to mid level and uh, even bigger studios in uk and uh, us and canada at the moment so that's the kind of team that we have in place as well uh, that's how we built our team uh, slowly starting from uh, india being a 10 member team in chennai and now we have teams across not only in chennai and pune but also in london and uh, uh, in la as well where uh, and vancouver where we have a commendable team who can take up for uh, who are work with major film makers and production networks so we have very good reputation uh, the entire uh, uh, team list if you look into the leadership team and also the other team members so the competition is such that uh, that how we are positioned between uh, with the major vfx studios as well and uh, the other piston uh, sorry what's the other question that you asked uh, so that's what like i was just asking that in terms of uh, like who do we compete with are the major vfx studios which is across the globe right yes yes we have uh, teams of us being okay and uh, we directly bid it to we directly yes. bid, uh, to the studios like something like a paramount a disney or there are there are other uh, there, is, there are like other players in between how does that work yeah, we do both work for example as a company that's how we build our company working closely with the uh, the bigger vfx studios directly and from then uh, based upon uh, how we uh, developed our team we then get to work with the uh, production or networks directly now we also keep this business going as well where we work with vfx studios as a subcontract mode but uh, predominantly we uh, as a team we have developed moving into work closely with production networks with teams in london as well as in la and also our uh, teams here in uh, india so we do both but predominantly move towards working directly with production uh, we are one uh, if you look into entire uh, glo- from global perspective we are very uniquely positioned in this manner and if you look at from india we would be the only company where we started in india and have moved on to vancouver and london and having a vfx operation in la is is not something that everybody is not some other company has done in the past if you look into the way that we have moved forward and we are more we have bigger aspirations as a company that that we have shown it uh, year on year in our previous growth as well also and just one last question a follow up uh, is that uh, so how much would be uh, directly with production as of today and how much would be subcontracting we've already discussed this and uh, yeah. it's, it's been uh, 70 to 70 and 30 but now we are uh, in a position that it will get uh, 50 50 slowly and then we will be doing a doing more of production work uh, it looks like from 25 it would be more of production work that is uh, it would reverse the trend uh, from 70 production and 30 yeah. so that is the kind of trend that we been that is the kind of project that we are working on at the moment as well okay so just to clarify 70 is uh, subcon currently right yes we are prior to make it 50 yes. 50 right yes yes okay. yeah okay okay got it thanks a lot Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parikshit Kabra from PKT Advisors LLP. Please go ahead. Hi, congratulations. I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes. thank you. Yeah, we can hear you. Great, great, great. Lovely to hear from all of you guys again. Uh, I just had one question. Uh, since we are expecting all the strikes now to get resolved and everything, uh, and so the, hopefully the next quarter should be a bumper quarter, uh, are we ready for that kind of a bumper quarter in terms of manpower? Uh, because at least as far as I can see, uh, or you know what I have been able to track based on information, that it doesn't seem like we have hired a lot over the last three four months. Uh, so what is the capacity utilization? Is there a ready set of candidates that we can onboard immediately next month as soon as the demand starts coming in? How are we thinking about handling the demand coming in? Uh, if you look into the hiring track, hiring uh, terms. Uh, uh, we have still been hiring. Uh, for example, uh, some of them are in notice period. Most of we have very recently hired uh, some very senior creative executives as well as here in India and the creative artists. And uh, so they would be ideally joining by January. And if you even look into our current team, it's not that uh, we have given them some uh, 
exposure into uh, unreal as well as uh, in effect area as well so these uh, these are the disciplines where we will have a very uh, higher scope of work coming in complex scope of work and also will have a very bit higher bigger margin compared to uh, previous uh, work that they will be doing and also now we are training people to have uh, multiple skill set so we are training a lot of people to become generalist so obviously their potential will be in a different level uh, in days to come but what would be your capacity utilization as of this quarter uh this quarter we have over 500 plus artists in india that would be the capacity that we will be using and likewise we've been constantly recruiting and uh, uh we recently uh, released offer letters for uh, mini artists and uh, mini uh, other uh, roles as well here in india and like this we are also building our team in london as well uh, we've been recruiting our team in london uh, we recently have very senior uh, environmental journalists joining us in london and likewise uh, we will have a well, well round up team uh, round a team by uh, december and january in london all right all right thank you thanks a lot guys yeah thank you thank you the next question is from the line of mayur shah from marine tech engineering please go ahead yeah hi everybody uh, congratulations for the uh, good set of numbers uh, my only uh, point is that what are the risk of bad debts in your uh, uh, business i mean suppose if your credit yeah, days are for ranging from 45 to 180 days and uh, if you are given your services and how do you all hedge against the bad debts if any i mean what are the risk involved Uh, we have been in this industry from almost a decade now and uh, till date we did, we haven't have even a single penny of bad debt that has happened there okay. there might be slightly delayed payment at instances but they are all mutually discussed and informed in prior to us so that doesn't uh, disrupt the arrangement in any manner okay 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 now next question is sir what are the gross margins in movies tv and commercial respectively then in terms of uh, accounting if you talk about we don't do uh, sector specific accounting we do the manage the accounting as consolidated because there are instances when the same artist is in the entire day spending half an hour for one task and then entire another two hours for second work and the rest of the part of the uh, workable hours for the third work so it's very uh, difficult at this stage to do that sector specific accounting Okay. As a as a consolidated thing, we are doing the entire accounting operations. So suppose on a ballpark figure, what would be the gross margin we all target for? So we are uh, very much aligned with the you know maintenance of a beta and the net profit margins as what they are right now. Okay, okay. And sir, what are the risks involved in your business? Because this is uh, something new for me. So I just want need to know what are the risks involved in your kind of business. I mean, something a technology takeover or something some different. I mean, just to give me some color on that. I mean, uh, for example, technology evolution of technology would only help our business to elevate and uh, to go to the next level. If you take risk, uh, risk would be mainly about the disruption, uh, maybe in terms of uh, maybe the stoppage of uh, the production. and uh, even for that we are finding solutions at the moment where uh, we are planning to work on uh, cinematics as well uh, uh, when there is no production where we can create our using tools like meta human and uh, unreal where we can uh, create our environment create our characters so that is something uh, these things would only these kind of challenges would only elevate us uh, to move towards these areas where we can create our own ips so that is something that we have been working on uh, based upon our internal resources that we have already and uh, these only i think uh, based on this piece is a challenge that we see and the talent uh, grooming talent training talents uh, because uh, there is a lot more demand coming in uh, even the last year that we had demand uh, the supply of talent is less where we are trying to train them and we try to keep training them on different areas the existing talent to different realms and uh, likewise the uh, new talents into areas where uh, we can uh, use them into creative aspects so that is these are the skills and uh, these are the risks that we have and uh, we have been working out on this areas to avoid uh, getting into this case this this body sir got it got it thank you and all the best for the second half of the year thank you so much yeah, thank, you, thank you thank you so much yeah. thank you the next question is from the line of pranay jain from deal wealth capital please go ahead uh i have two questions for mr yogi lakshmi uh 
uh, one is uh, what is the order book uh, reading as of end of H1 this year company and what is it at the start of the financial year. Also, I understand with, with the strike ending and, and uh, hope brimming, uh, I'm sure we've been in discussion with uh, many stakeholders, so there is uh, addition expected in the second half. But on a conservative basis, what is the order book expected to be by the end of the year? So present, before and after our conservative estimate. Uh, considerably, we look to better whatever we have done in the first half. So that is the uh, thing that we've been uh, trying to focus. That is uh, what we see for the next half only. And uh, likewise, the next year, uh, we see a lot of uh, uh, maybe a growth uh, compared to this year because of the strike. So it gets over uh, this year around. And uh, particularly the next year, we will get to see much more of uh, better result. Uh, moving towards next year, we will have more bigger opportunities. And uh, we will see a bigger boom around uh, next year based upon uh, the strike resolution and the stuff. But what is the order book uh, reading right now? I mean, it could be executable over 15 projects. Its size would be so much. So just wanted to understand what are we working on right now and what was it reading like six months back? Uh, in terms of projects, uh, we do have a bigger project. In terms of reading, in the terms of cost, uh, uh, we have projects which is uh, one project which is in the size of... Uh, four to six crores, which is something that we've been working on. And like this, there is another project of the same size, and there is other project which is of a smaller size as well. So it is about the different projects that we work on which contribute to our revenue. And uh, if you look at, uh, we do have uh, three to uh, four projects of the same size. So, and uh, there would be some floating projects which would come up eventually. So these uh, four to six crore projects that you mentioned, these would be executable over an average period of, uh, let's say, uh, six months uh, tenure. That's what it would be. Uh, this is something that the project also know, right? Uh, for example, as in we begin, uh, we would start getting packages for each project as we move forward. This is something that we've been working on, which where we have stated uh, for uh, next uh, six, seven months time. And uh, so this is, and again, on additional, we, this is something that you didn't... Uh, uh, make sure that we book all our resources at one time. Uh, we would be open to some floating projects as well where uh, we wanted to make sure that we have opening for uh, the relationships, other clients as well. So that is how we work. So as we are expanding our relationship with uh, content platforms, OTTs, or production studios, any visibility that you can provide on, on, on the pipeline, at least the visibility that you have right now, uh, I, I know that there are things which are going to come uh, later. We are not uh, aware of it right now. But uh, whatever you can share presently, please. Oh, you mean the name of the project? Uh, no, uh, not uh, necessarily the name, but uh, the pipeline size is going to be worth 15, 20 crores over the next six months, mostly movies, whatever color you can provide. It would be mostly around, uh, as I mentioned, there are three projects of size of four to six crores. Uh, it should be around, uh, maybe we couldn't be able to let the name, let you know the name of the project at this time, but this can grow in size. For example, one project four crores, another project uh, around four to six crores. So it would be around uh, 15 crores uh, for three to four months, which is an order book. And uh, likewise, uh, we do also have projects coming in uh, maybe uh, for the next uh, week as well, we will have some projects coming in and that is how we would keep getting booked as yes. we move forward, as in we have additional opening in our capacity. Okay, so just to uh, understand this correctly, and, and uh, this is my last question, you mentioned that there are some bigger projects also which we are excited about, uh, say post-March. Uh, yeah. So it will involve our global teams and, then, and those other things you mentioned. So could you give us some sense uh, because this seems to be like a new leap uh, from what we have done before. Uh, so, uh, how is it going to be different and, and special for us? Uh, what's the exciting thing to look forward to in these projects? Well, uh, the question is a little unclear. Uh, you mean uh, the size? You mean the scope of the work or? Uh... Yes, these big projects uh, which are going to uh, go on the floor from let's say March or April. Uh, how is it special or different from what we have done in terms of scope, scale, whatever it is? 
co person be get to start working from uh, pre production stages yeah that is that's how it would be very different in the sense uh, we would have uh, in the previous and project, project had, uh, on a bigger scale we've already done this before but this is going to be on a bigger, bigger scale. scale in terms of we would be involved more in terms of previous as well so with the previous projects uh, we would have done pre production uh, building breakdown and all but uh, this is something more towards previous part and other things so it could be quite different from other in this way uh thank you very much sir ladies and gentlemen due to time constraint that was the last question for today i would now like to hand the conference over to ms channi chandri for closing comments over to you ma'am thank you thank you everyone for joining the conference call of basic slide studio limited if you have any query you can write to us at research@kirinadvisors.com once again thank you everyone for joining the conference thank you very much ladies and gentlemen on behalf of kiran advisors that concludes this conference we thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you thank you